Having a properly calibrated extruder can still give the results of under extruding if your flow rate is set too low or over extruding if your flow rate is too high. Jeez, I'm working here. Anyways, to get our prints to the next level with some amazing results, we're going to calculate the flow rate. No, not that flow rate. Although she might give you a great rate if you bundle your home and auto insurance. We're talking about your slicer flow rate. Calibrating your E-steps is to make sure your extruder is pushing that right amount of filament out, while the flow rate makes sure that the right amount of filament is coming out of the hot end. More specifically, this thing right here, the nozzle. E-steps and flow rate work together. If you haven't set your E-steps yet, stop here, go do it first. I have a video on the Pushing Plastic channel that will help you get where you need to be. Let's get working on that flow rate and get your printer pushing plastic. Calibrating the flow rate, also known as the extrusion multiplier, is going to allow us to make some great looking parts that are more dimensionally accurate. This is going to help our mating parts fit together correctly. None of this matters if you haven't calibrated your E-steps first. To get you on the right path to making some incredible prints, we'll be doing a test print first. We're going to take some measurements from that print. I'll be using a simple flow rate cube. I have the link posted down below in the description where you can download this. There are others out there and they'll work equally well. The biggest difference is that the one I use has rounded corners rather than 90 degree square corners. This will keep the filament from building up in the corners, giving us a more accurate measurement. Go ahead and download it, save it somewhere where you can easily find it, and we'll get right to it. Now that we have our flow cube downloaded, let's bring it into our slicer. So we'll go to File, Open Files. We'll browse to it. It happens to be right here. Flow cube, open that up. And there it is, right in the center of our bed plate. Now we'll want to make some changes to the settings on our profile. Right now, I have no set visible settings. So what I'll do is click right here, open them up. We'll move up to the top, and what we'll want to do is leave our layer height at 0.2, our line width at 0.4. Our wall at 2 is good. It's going to give us a total wall thickness of 0.8. Our top layers, we want to be 0. We don't want this thing to have a lid. We want to change our infill to 0. And now we've got to change our flow to 100%, but I'm not seeing flow. If that's the case for you, come up here to the search box and start typing flow. And that'll take you right to where it's at. It's under material. We click these little lines. That takes us to Cure's inner workings where it hides all the good stuff. And we'll come down and we'll add a check mark next to flow. And that will make sure that flow is always there for us from now on. And what we're going to do is make sure that our flow is set at 100%, and it is. So we're going to go ahead and slice this. And now we're going to preview. 20 minutes, not bad. And as you can see, it has no lid. If we were to go back and change our top layers back to four, like it was, and re-slice, there you can see it's got a lid. So let's put that back to zero. Re-slice it, and let's print and see what we come up with.
Now that we have our cube all printed up, we need to take some measurements. The tools we're going to use is the calipers and the sharpeners. Take your calipers, make sure you zero them out as always, of course. And we're going to measure each wall. I have 28.6. And what I'm going to do with the Sharpie is write that number down right on the wall. You don't have to do this. You can actually write it on paper if you want. Just the way I like to do it. Uh, 0.89. Going to over to the next one. Point eight one. And our final wall. I don't have those. There we go. 0.79. The strange range. What we're going to do is take the average of the four sides. And we're going to divide by four. To get our average thickness, we're going to take 0 0.79 plus 0 0.86 plus 0.89 plus 0.81. We get 3.35, we'll divide that by four. And our average wall thickness is roughly 0.84. So we'll, we'll use the 8375. Five. We need to apply that to our slicer profile. To do this, we'll take the desired wall thickness. In other words, the wall thickness we were shooting for, 0.8. And we'll divide that by the average of what we measured, 0.8375. This is going to give us 0.9552. We'll multiply that by 100 for a result of 95.52%. This is going to be our new flow rate, and we'll enter it here and re-slice. We got 95.52. A good idea is to save your profile. Now I'm going to create a new profile here, and I'm going to call it Ender 3 Standard for now. And that way I'm not changing the original. And then we'll go ahead and re-slice. We'll print it, see 22 minutes. And before I slice it, I want to double check, to make sure everything looks good, and it does. So we'll print this out and we'll measure it up and see how it worked out for us. Now that we have our part printed, we're going to take some measurements. We're going to zero out our calipers. Now with 0.8, that's good. And number two, 0.8. So far, so good. 
Slide number three. Trying to be gentle not to squash them. Point eight what? Oh, point eight oh. I'll take it. And the final side. Point eight oh. Can't beat that. I'll take it. So we found that our flow rate was a little high at 100%. And found that by using the simp some simple math, our prints are a lot more dimensionally accurate at 95.52%. We entered that value to our slow slicer profile. You'll want to recalculate this if you're changing your E-steps or for different filament types. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. Hit that like button. Smash the bell, be your own hero, live your life one layer at a time, and as always, please subscribe.